Um, I've had a number of other projects underway, one that's actually on YouTube as well, and this is a little logo for it. Um, it's a little thing that I'm going to be doing called the Poetry Show. Um, so if you're interested in that, I'll stick a link over in the More Information section and you can check out the teaser trailer that I've put together. Um, today's tutorial is going to serve two purposes. One is a shameless advert for the new channel, which is going to be shortened to Po Show, but this is the Poetry Show logo. And the second thing is to basically acknowledge the fact that, thank you very much guys, I now have 100 subscribers. And how do I repay that? By doing a tutorial that absolutely nobody asked for and has very little kind of uh, use outside of me just pointing everybody else to this new channel that I'm doing. But basically what this tutorial is going to do is to show you how to make your own kind of pirated um, YouTube-esque logo um, to hawk your own goods on YouTube and trick people into thinking that they're getting something that they're not because after all that's what the internet's all about, eh? So what we're going to do is basically, um, you're all familiar with this particular setup, we're going to make these basic kinds of um, YouTube logos um, with the kind of little shine here and the rest of it and we're going to do it the, the very, very easy way just by literally ripping off somebody else's image before. So we're going to close that. You're going to need a white background to start off with and then you want to go into um, Google Images and type in something like YouTube logo and a whole host of YouTube logos will come up. Um, you get this one with the kind of RSS feed uh, signal. You might want the old uh, broadcast yourself version then you could change what broadcast yourself changes to as well. Um, I'm just going to be working with this one here and um, just a bog standard and then we just click on that obviously and then I'm going to right click that and copy the image to the clipboard and then right click it and paste into and then we've got it in there and then finally I'm just going to need to turn that floating selection in my layers dialog to a new layer and then you've got your pasted layer um, so far so gravy it's all pretty straightforward so what do we need to do next well obviously we want to change the lettering around now this is very very simple all you're going to need is your text tool up here and then when you go to type um, let's just say what should we have uh, 100 um, you'll notice that as soon as I started typing a new layer popped up um, which is quite useful um, so 100 is going to be the text I want there and then I'm going to want another piece of text oh no we'll manipulate this one first so I've set that to 100, but obviously at the moment that's far too small. So I'm just going to um, whack the size up by clicking on the size, and you'll see that that just grows. Um, I can also change the font to something a little bit more YouTube-esque. Um, I can't remember to hand which one I used before, but it will be something bold, obviously, because it may even be something as boring as that, no that's not quite good enough but we're basically just going to play with this until we find the kind of font that we want um, somebody recently asked me how to find fonts that were a bit more interesting um, you can use what I'm doing here which is the uh, text tools font selection um, or what you can do is actually import your own fonts um, literally just type in fonts into Google and you can download fonts and save them in your fonts folder in GIMP and you'll have a whole host of new fonts that will be interesting um, otherwise you're kind of stuck with the stuff you would have had that'll do nicely um, otherwise you'll just kind of be stuck with the stuff that you had um, through Microsoft Windows or whatever anyway so we're going to have this kind of font I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so it is the kind of size there we go that's kind of the thing we're looking for um, click on the move tool and just move that there and what I'm actually going to need to do as well which is probably fairly obvious um, I'm just going to paint over the current U because we don't really need that just make me brush a bit bigger for those of you that are into your shortcut keys I was using the square bracket there just quickly get rid of that and then we'll move back over to our text and we want to just move that up there now you'll notice that's not quite as tall as it needs to be now rather than finding an appropriate 
um, font, we can just scale the tool. Um, or if I use the perspective one, actually, that's quite good for stretching. And then I'm literally just going to pull that up and that up. Um, I want to try and get the edge at the top to be a straight edge rather than a jagged edge. And then click that. And then you've got 100. And I'm sure you can all basically guess where I'm going with this now. Um, the next thing we're going to need to do is go back to our pasted layer, get rid of the tube. Now, obviously, we want the exact color of kind of pinky red that's being used there. So we're going to use our eyedropper tool, click on just a part of the red background, go back to my paintbrush, and just paint over that, and you'll see that I get absolutely the kind of color I want. And I want to be very careful not to hit this lovely uh, gradient, white gray gradient up there. So I've got my 100. Uh, I'm then going to change my color to white back to where I was, and back onto the text tool, and you should see that that's on white as well, and fairly obviously, considering what I've been boasting about, uh, we're going to write 100 subs, because I now have 100 subscribers, oh, 100 subs then, um, I'm not sure that makes me a better human being, but who knows, so 100 subs, and then we'll get our perspectives again, and we'll just pull that up to about there, pull this up to about there, so we've got that flat edge along the top again, and click transform, and there we have it, 100 subs. And then you just want to do a quick control M, that's M from McDonald's, um, and expand as necessary, merge, and then that will merge all of them together, and you've got your wonderful little YouTube-esque logo celebrating the fact that I now have 100 subscribers. Um, somebody else asked me if I would go through how to um, add a glow effect to an image. So I'm just very quickly going to do that because it's very simple and I don't really think it warrants an extra tutorial. But to get a glow filter effect, we could just go to filters. Um, I believe it's artistic. Yes, that's right. And soft glow and I just move this over here you can toggle the brightness and that kind of thing so actually if I take the brightness down a little bit maybe turn the glow radius up okay then da -da, we get a nice glow um, obviously that looks a lot better on portrait photography than it does on my crummy logo but there you go just a very quick tutorial um, please do keep asking for other tutorials because um, I do kind of run out of ideas if people aren't bombarding me with them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I do hope you check out the Poetry channel, although I do appreciate it won't be to everybody's taste. Um, there's not much up there at the moment, just a trailer, but it will be a series of vlogs as well based around poetry and other stuff that I'm interested in. So if you think that the GIMP is the only thing in the world that I can get incredibly geeky about, think again. There's a whole host of stuff out there that I can blog about. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful or fun or whatever. Get a t-shirt printed that, you know, has a go at people in a YouTube style -y. Whatever you want to apply it to. Um, and I'll see you next time.